morning, beloveds. I got a cat in a cat tree over here snoring. All right. Um, a little discombobulated this morning. It's Thursday. I went for a run, but Tom went into work at four o'clock in the morning. Thank you, Hurricane Laura. So, um, yeah, not sure. So my watch says it is the 25th. My run says it's Tuesday, but Tom not being here has got me a little weirded out. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so it is August 25th. Our title is I Have Complete Confidence in the Law. The good in which you believe can triumph over every evil you have experienced. You have a silent partnership with the infinite. This partnership has never been dissolved. It can never be. You have, you are to have implicit confidence in your own ability, knowing that it is the nature of thought to externalize itself in your affairs, knowing that you are the thinker. You are going to turn resolutely from every sense of lack, want, limitation, and declare that the perfect law of God is operating in, for, and through you. Say, I have complete confidence in my knowledge and understanding of the law of good. I am not, I'm not only, I not only know what the law is, I know how to use it. I know that I shall obtain definite results through the use of it. Knowing this, having confidence in my ability to use the law and using it daily for specific purposes, gradually I build up an unshakable faith, both in the law and the possibility of demonstrating it. Therefore, today, <clears throat> I declare that the law of the Lord is perfect in everything I do. Today, I believe in divine guidance. Today, I believe that underneath are the everlasting arms. Today, I rest in this divine assurance and this divine security. I know not only that all is well with my soul, my spirit, and my mind, all is well with my affairs. Okay. So this is another one of those that you kind of have to unpack a little bit. One of the fa one of the things being is that he's definitely requiring practice in this one. So, our, let me remind you, our title is I Have Complete Confidence in the Law. Uh, how do you have complete confidence in anything? Practice. The more you practice, um, the more confidence that you have. Uh, I was a musician in school, and to have the confidence during the competitions and during the shows, I was in marching band, um, you practiced. You practiced at home, you practiced you know, in class, you practiced on the field, you practiced all the time. So, as Jesse says, practice makes permanent. So, if you want to have confidence in the law, you have to practice using the law. Okay, so, the good in which you believe can triumph over every evil you experience. Okay, so, the good in which you believe can triumph over the evil. How does it do this? Well, let's start off with, you have a silent partnership in the infinite. Okay. This partnership has never been dissolved and can never be dissolved. There is nothing that you can do that will dissolve the par your partnership with the infinite. I hate to break it to you, you don't have the power to dissolve this partnership. You do have the power to create the illusion that the partnership does not exist, but you cannot dissolve the partnership. You are partners with the infinite because you are made up of the infinite. So, that your power is not in dissolving, but in creating the illusion that you don't have the partnership. It's there. You just have to be conscious of it, recognize it, and use it. You are to have implicit confidence in your own ability, in your own ability, 
knowing that it is the nature of thought to externalize itself in your affairs, knowing that you are the thinker. Okay. It is the nature of thought to externalize it in your affairs. That right there. It is the nature of thought to externalize itself in your affairs. That is kind of the basis of science of mind right there. Basically, the thoughts that are constantly tumbling around in your head and leaking out of your head into your environment. So when, and think about this or try it out. When you are happy and thinking good thoughts, then you see good things. And when you're not happy and you're thinking negative thoughts, you see negative things. They are externalizing in your environment. They are coloring your perception so that you're seeing one or the other. Um, so it, it behooves us to practice thinking the good. We acknowledge the negative. I mean, for Pete's sakes, there's a hurricane in the Gulf. I acknowledge that there is a hurricane in the Gulf, but I am going to practice knowing that it will be good. It will be well. Um, I'm going to take reasonable precautions because I'm acknowledging, but I'm going to know that the precautions that we take are going to keep people safe. All right, real world example because it's on my mind. Um, you are going to turn resolutely from every sense of lack, want, limitation. <laughs> and he doesn't say, you're going to try. He says, you're going to. He yodas us occasionally. Let me let my geek flag fly there for a minute. You are going to turn resolutely, resolutely. It's like, turn your back on it. Turn your back on lack, any, turn your back on any sense of lack, want, and limitation. Don't try, do. And declare that the perfect law of good is operating in, for, and through you. And that's another key there. Um, spirit can only do for you what it can do through you. So as you are resolutely turning away from lack, limitation, and, um, want, you are turning to the operation of this thing in you, for you, through you. It will do through you what you want. That's where we also get the phrase treat and move your feet. So treat for what you want and then go out and get it. You got to be in the right place at, at the right time because you have treated and so now you need to get out there where it's happening. All right, our treatment. Say, I have complete confidence in my knowledge and understanding of the law of good. Okay, do you have complete confidence in your knowledge and understanding of the law of good? And if you don't, what steps do you need to take to make, to, to make that real? What steps do you need to take to have that knowledge, to feel like you have the knowledge and understanding of the law. Do you need to watch other ministers talk about it? There are bunches of them on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, please feel free to contact me uh, and I will give you lists of ministers that I know are on, you know, social media. Uh, I follow a bunch of them. Uh, and then, uh, are there books that you need to, that, that you want to read? Again, we can give you lists of books to read, this being one of them. Um, the textbook being one of them, Living Science of Mind being one of them. Uh, this thing called You is a fantastic one. Uh, Ernest wrote a bunch of books. The Bible is one of them. So, um... I not only know what the law is, I know how to use it. Again, if you don't feel confident in this, contact us at Creative Life and we will help you sort resources. Uh, we teach plenty of classes. Heartfelt Living is coming up. That's a good one. Um, 
I know that I shall obtain definite results through the use of it. Knowing this, having confidence in my ability to use the law and use it daily for specific purposes, okay? And that's it. There, there it is. I know how to use it. I know I shall obtain definite results for it. Knowing this, I, mm, sorry, I got a line off. Knowing this, having confidence in my ability to use law and using it daily for specific purposes. Use it daily for specific purposes. That's called practice. Have a specific goal and start small. That's why we start with parking spaces. Start small, use it daily. And the more you use it, the more you see the results, the more confidence you'll have. Practice, practice, practice. Build up the reflexes or the calluses. Jesse's a musician too. Plays guitar, calluses. Um, gradually, I build up an unshakable faith. And you build up the reflexive. When things happen, you do this instead of this. You build the habit of using the law in a positive manner to get what you want instead of unconsciously using the law and getting what you get. Both in the law and the, the possibility of demonstrating it. Okay. Therefore, today I declare that the law of the Lord is perfect in everything I do. Today I believe in divine guidance. Half the time I don't know what's coming out of my mouth, but I trust when I am doing this, I trust that the words that I am speaking are the words that somebody, including this, this one right here, are the words that we need to hear. So I trust that there is divine guidance. I believe, today I believe that underneath are the everlasting arms. And I'm going to bet that underneath are the everlasting arms are a Bible quote. And there is a book, and I don't remember the name of it, um where somebody went through, uh, it may only be the textbook, but they went through Ernest's works and told you where the Bible quotes that he's constantly using came from. Because he doesn't, he doesn't tell us, but somebody did the work. So there is a book out there. It's a nice big one, uh, if you're curious. Uh, today, I rest in the, this divine assurance and this divine security. I know... Not only that all is well with my soul, my spirit, and my mind, all is well with my affairs. All right. So we've got a couple of missions in there today. Our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to have complete confidence in our knowledge and understanding of the law of good. So that's part of the mission. The other part of the mission is to know that all is well with our soul, with our spirit, and with our mind. And our affairs. And that that one can be a big one. Um, a lot of us feel more, you know, on stable ground with knowledge and understanding. But when we have to know that all is well. But I will give you a secret. All is well with my soul and my spirit. That one, that one's easy because I know where my soul and my spirit come from. My soul and my spirit are part of that greater whole. My soul is part of God. My spirit is the spirit of God. It's just a splinter. So, of course, all is well with it. It's coming from a divine source. My mind, <laughs> and that's where the knowledge and understanding come in. Have I done my work? Have I done my homework? Have I done my practice? Have I done my studies? Yes. Yes, I have. But I haven't stopped. I have continued to study. I've continued to practice. I will continue to study. I will continue to practice. Um, that's what this has been for me. This has been study. This has been practice. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot and I'm hoping that y'all are learning along with me. So not a small mission, but definitely you have the power behind you to accomplish it. 
All right, beloveds, I am going to move into the process of my day. So I'm going to encourage you to do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Open the windows of your soul and allow the breath of heaven in so that you know that you live in heaven now. It is a consciousness, not a place. All right. And you are the beloved child of God in whom spirit is well pleased. Know this. Feel this. Believe this. Do something that incur that engages your mind and your body today. And if you are living in the um, Gulf Coast area, please take the precautions that you need to, to take uh, now. Um, I should be online with you, no problems tomorrow, because Laura is looking like she's coming in uh, overnight Thursday into the early, or overnight Wednesday into the early Thursday. Um, provided all goes well, I will be with you Thursday morning. We'll figure it out. If not, I'll get it up here when I can get it up. All right, beloveds, know that all is well. Because you are a divine splinter. And nothing can endanger your soul or your spirit. You have a partnership that you cannot dissolve. Because you are made of the stuff of divine. Okay. Reverend David will be on with you around 5 p.m. today. I will be back with you at 9 a.m. Drink plenty of water because it's still hot out there. Bye, beloveds.